Let's see what happens when we take the nth root of a to the n. And we're going to limit our discussion now to when a is real. And so as we're looking at this, we want to consider what happens, like for instance, what happens if we take the square root of 2 squared? Well, working this through, 2 squared is 4, and the square root of 4, as we've talked about before, is 2. We always return the principal square root if it's even, or the principal fourth root if it's even. Well, what about the square root of negative 2 squared? Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4, but when I s take the square root of it, it becomes 2. So, when I took the square root of 2 squared and the square root of negative 2 squared, I got 2. In other words, it looks like when I take the square root of a squared, I get the positive version of a. And the only way to do that is to force the absolute value in. So this is actually our rule for square roots. It also happens to be true that the nth root of a to the n is equal to the absolute value of a if and only if n is even. So if that's true, then you can always take the absolute value of it. Now, that's not true though for the cube root of 3 cubed, because the cube root of 3 cubed is the cube root of 27, which is 3. But the cube root of negative 3 cubed, well negative 3 cubed is negative 27, and the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. The negative just comes out. And so the nth root of a to the n is a if n is odd. These are the two hardest pieces of information to keep track of with radicals, but they're the single most important piece when it c comes to solving equations or it comes to keeping track of what we're working on. So you really want to make sure you have this down. So let's look at some examples. And we're going to use this rule directly to simplify some of these radicals that we're going to be looking at. So suppose we have the square root of x squared. Now because we don't know whether x is positive or not, and we have an even root, and a variable, we're just going to take that variable, and we're going to put it inside absolute values. So the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Okay, what about the fourth root of x minus 4 to the fourth? Notice again, our fours match, it's even, and we have a variable inside of it. Because of all of that, this is equal to x minus 4 inside of absolute values. Alright, what about then the fifth root of 3x minus 2 to the fifth? Well, again we notice the fives match, but this time it's odd, so even though we have a variable, because it's odd, this comes out as simply 3x minus 2. Notice the distinct lack of absolute values. And so that's working through and evaluating the nth root of a to the n, so long as a is real. Now, there's one more t version of this problem that can show up. Suppose we have the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 4. This doesn't look like it matches these yet, but notice that x squared plus 4x plus 4 factors. In fact, it's a perfect square trinomial. So 2 times x is 2x. Since 4x is twice 2x, this in fact factors as x plus 2 quantity squared. Now we match, because when we don't write it, remember it's a 2. It's even, and we have a variable. So that means that we get the absolute value of x plus 2 as our answer. Now, I keep saying that there's a variable here, and that's why we're having the absolute value. No, remember that that means we have to leave the absolute value around. If I were to do the square root of negative 5 squared, I notice again, let's do that in blue so it shows up a little bit better. I notice that my power matches my root, 
And so, and I don't have a variable, but I do recognize that it's even. So that means I take whatever is being squared and I put it inside of absolute values. But I can go farther because I know what this is, so I know that by definition it's going to come out as a 5. So when we have a number, and only a number, we can get rid of it. When we have a variable, we leave the absolute value around on the even roots.